Security is on high alert, bro. They're super tight today. But the reason why I'm risking my neck for you guys is because I'm here at the Vanderbilt Burn Center. Now, the reason why I brought you to the Vanderbilt Burn Center is because, man, when I was 12 years old, I was in a fire that left me with second degree burns and it almost led to my right leg being amputated. I almost lost my leg, dude, because of a stupid, impulsive decision, man. And so many of us, that's what we do every single day is make stupid, impulsive decisions that are costing you your lives. That's right, bro. You heard me right. I said lives. And that's because if you keep making stupid, dumb decisions, like not going after your dreams in life, just because you're too freaking afraid, man, you're costing both you and your family everything, man. And if you keep making stupid decisions, like sinning over and over and over again and disobeying a law, you're costing yourself your hereafter. Like I said, man, I actually know what it's like to be in a fire, man, to be terribly burned and go through some of the most excruciating pain that I've ever dealt with in my entire life, man. And if this is the dunya, I don't want to know what the hereafter is like. So today I want to actually teach you and show you what you can learn from my stupid mistake plus three additional life lessons as a bonus. But dude, let's go somewhere else where it's not as sketchy. ألم تر كيف ضرب الله مثلا كلمة طيبة كشجرة طيبة كشجرة طيبة أصلها ثابت وفرعها في السماء تؤتي أكلها كل حين بإذن ربها ويضرب الله الأمثال للناس لعلهم يتذكرون Ooh, this is much better, man. Ain't got to worry about no security guards trying to shut down my video, bro. Alhamdulillah, I brought you to Percy Priest Lake, which is one of my absolutely favorite spots to come to, man. This is absolutely gorgeous, man. If you could see the blue lake the way that I'm seeing it, Allah, Allah bought it, man. It's unbelievable, man. The, the, the scenery, man, the trees, the rocks behind me, man. It is absolutely gorgeous. But we're losing daylight, bro. So it's time to get in the video. Life lesson number one that I want you to take away from my stupid mistake, man, idiotic, impulsive decision, was that when you're afraid of the consequences, you may have lifelong regret. And this is what I mean. To give you a little bit of backstory, man, I was with some friends, man, and we found some metal scraps at a feed mill, and my friends encouraged me to light it on fire, man. And like I said, when I did, I literally stood at the base of the fire, lit it, and it engulfed my entire body, man. And I jumped out a second later, man, but within that second, I lost my eyebrows. It's kind of funny now, but I lost my eyebrows, all my hair, dude. And I had second degree burns that covered the entire front port, my entire shin, my right leg, from the bottom of my knee to the top of my ankle, man. And I was so afraid of the consequences of telling my mom and my stepdad at the time that I had burned my leg because I was already in so much trouble that I actually didn't tell them for three weeks, man. I didn't tell them that I had this burn. And I was so afraid, I didn't even, I changed my socks, man. I kept my socks on, the same socks, which is crazy. Again, I was stupid, man. I was 12 years old. And I left my socks on, socks on man, for three weeks because I was afraid that they were gonna find the socks, man and the burn actually scabbed up into and intertwined with the cotton sock, bro. The point I'm trying to get to, man, talking about fear and consequences of your life and you could have lifelong regret, is that I was in gym class one day, we were playing kickball, and the kid, this little kid, he kicked my leg, man, and it took that scabbed, burned, crazy looking leg and it started bleeding everywhere. And that's when my mom and my stepdad had found out that I had a burn, man, that I had this crazy burn on my leg. And when we went to the doctors, dude, they were like, if you had waited maybe just a few more days, we would have had to amputate your leg. I spoke too soon, guys. Some like wildlife manager was like waving at me like, what are you doing, buddy, with your camera? I'm like, what am I not allowed to film here, man? It's like, it's crazy, man. But anyways, dude, the point is, is that looking back on this story, man, and reflecting on this point, is that 
in the grand scheme of things, I would have, if I would have lost my leg because I was afraid of the consequences of getting trouble with my parents, right? I would have regretted that decision for the rest of my life, man. I would have thought, Josh, you idiot. You should have just like told them. And if you got in trouble, so freaking be it, dude, because it's not worth your leg, dude. And you know, I feel like this is a great life lesson, man. I don't know if you can hear Adam, my son in the background. Sorry, man, dad duty is always, um, is that man, when you fear going after your dreams, right? You fear the consequences. Oh my God, what if I fail? Oh my God, what if I succeed and now I have all this responsibility and people are looking at me like you have to maintain this uh, the success and what if you go bankrupt or what if you fail and pl you know you have total blunders or whatever it is you know your your fear of success your fear excuse me of failure whatever man and you allow that to control you you will have lifelong regret at the end of your life because you didn't go for it man or if you allow these impulsive decisions to allow you to disobey a lot to get some quick fix man to, to relieve you of some anxiety that you have um, or some you know some temptation that you have man it is going to lead to ultimate regret on the day of judgment so my question to you man is what consequences are you fearing that are preventing you from taking action and is going to lead to lifelong regret right as you're thinking about that point number two man life lesson number two that I can take from this stupid decision I made and that you can take as well, man, is who are your influences, man? Right, when I was a kid, I was trying to fit in, I was trying to be cool and, you know, be accepted, man. And so these influence, these influences that I had, these negative influences, they were encouraging me to do stupid things, man, that weren't in my best interest. And so I ask you the same, man. Do you have influences, man, that are encouraging you to sin or encouraging you to be mediocre? And there's this old expression that goes, change your friends or change your friends. And if you don't know what that means, basically what this expression says is that you should try to change your friends. Meaning, if they're encouraging you to sin, to disobey a law, right? To be mediocre, to not go after your dreams, to just settle, right? Just be average. Well, you can be the one that says, hey guys, maybe we shouldn't be doing this sin anymore. Maybe we shouldn't go to this place anymore. Maybe we shouldn't uh, hang around these types of people anymore. Maybe we shouldn't do this anymore. Allah's not pleased with this, right? Or again, you know, if, if they're encouraging you, hey man, you know, just chill, bro. Just chill, man. You know, let's go party. Let's go waste our time here or there. Instead of actually taking our lives seriously, man, and being the change, you know, that could literally change our entire family tree, man. You could be the person that changes your family's life forever, man. The generations of your family forever, man, from all the good that you could do. But if you can't change them, if they're so stubborn and ignorant, well, then you need to change your friends. Yanni, meaning you need to change your circle of influence. You need to get new friends, man. And so that's my encouragement to you, man, when, you know, I had these people, unfortunately, that were encouraging me to do stupid things. Yeah, we were 12, man, we were 12, you know, and you're going to make dumb decisions, man, but it's these types of influences, man, that make you do things that you normally wouldn't do, influence you and encourage you to do things that aren't in your best interest, man, and can lead you to a life of regret. I dude <laughs> it's getting cold man and it's about mugger time so let's take this back to the crib so that we can talk about life lesson number three that you can take from me lighting myself on fire and more importantly man maybe not more importantly but make do on my promise to you man which is the title of this video what you can learn about jehennam <laughs>
Now I think we're gonna be relatively safe, man. From anyone else trying to shut down my video, bro. No more security guards, no more wildlife management, unless my neighbors decide to call the fuzz. Now, the third life lesson, man, that I want you to take is something that I'm always preaching. And that is you and you alone are the one to interpret your life. Let me say that again. You and you alone are the one to interpret your life. And what I mean by that is, man, when that kid kicked me in my leg, dude, and it, it hurt so bad, it dropped me to the ground, man. I wanted nothing more than to pummel his face into the, in, into the, the gymnasium floor. <laughs> right? I wanted to beat that kid nine ways a Sunday, man. And that was my interpretation at that time, was that I wanted, to in, I wanted to hurt him like he hurt me. But looking back on that, man, that again happened for me and not to me. Because had he not done that, like I said, man, those doctors said, had you waited a couple more days, doofus, you could have possibly lost your leg, man. Do you understand what that would have done to me man how many things i would not have been able to experience or i would have had so much difficulty experiencing man and just the fact that dude i've lost a leg over something so stupid man so now i look at it and go man that was something that actually happened for me and i'm actually thankful to that uh you know that per obviously he's not a kid anymore right but that individual man i'm thankful whether it was intentional or unintentional for him to kick me man I'm thankful that it happened because it saved my leg. So my question to you, man, and more so, I challenge you to give new interpretations to negative events in your life, right? Or events that you have interpreted negatively, right? At the time, like I mentioned again, I wanted to hurt him. I wanted to hurt him. Now looking back, I go, I want to thank him, right? So what events have taken place in your life either from your own doing right i started that fire that was my fault or that someone else may have done to you that you can now give a new interpretation man interpretation of going from anger from wanting to get retribution revenge possibly to a state of gratitude and thankfulness and new perspectives that help you you know what I'm saying? Become a better person and develop to the best version of yourself. So man, wrap things up and bring this to a conclusion. What have we discussed today? Well, we've discussed influences. We've discussed giving priority to the wrong things, fearing the wrong consequences and just having our priorities totally out of line and out of whack, right? And lastly is interpretations. Now you might ask yourself, all right, Josh, yeah, we've covered those things, but what does that have to do with Jehannam? Well, man, the way I look at it, what are people in Jehannam going to do? Right? What are the inhabitants, what are the dwellers of Hellfire, Wadabillah, what are they going to do? They're going to point the finger at other people. They're going to point the finger at their influencers, right? The people that influence them and encourage them to disbelieve and disobey Allah. They're going to blame them. They're not going to accept accountability They're not or responsibility. They're going to blame other people right another one is they had their priorities out of whack instead of prioritizing Allah prioritizing obeying Allah his legislation following the messenger of uh, you know of Allah salam, they prioritize other things right my priority should not have been oh my god what are my parents gonna do am i gonna get in more trouble am i gonna be grounded even longer they're gonna take even more things away from me is my life gonna be even more miserable i'm not gonna be able to hang out with my friends or whatever they're gonna make me do chores around the house when really i should have been concerned about my leg because if i lost my leg that's an irreversible calamity that i'll have to live with for the rest of my life right and so the people of Jehenna, man, they don't have their priorities right. And lastly is interpretations, right? Like we said, you give the interpretation of your life. And some of us, many of us, we mistakenly give the wrong interpretation to the things that happen to us. And many people in Jehenna, Audibillah, 
are going to have incorrect and improper interpretations. Whether it be the Christians who say, well, Esau was born without a father, so that makes him the son of God, Trinity. That's a wrong interpretation. Or the atheists, they believe, you know, in the Big Bang theory, correct? Right? God can't exist. There's no, you know, there's no proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's another improper interpretation. Right? So these are th just three main points, man, that I believe we can derive from my story to help you focus on what's important, man. Get your influences right. Get your priorities right. Get your interpretations right for your life. With that being said, guys, that's the video. I hope that you got value from today's video. If you did, I'm going to ask you for a couple things. Firstly, please donate down to the channel below. You'll find a description. You'll, in the description, you'll find a bunch of links, right, to different means of donating to the channel so that we can reinvest that money back into the channel to reinvest in yourself, really, to give you better quality content, higher quality content that all of us can enjoy and transform our lives. That's number one. Number two, please like. Drop your boy a like down below because it truly does help the channel. And share this video with your friends, with your family, right? And people that you think are actually going to benefit from it. Jack a little Karen for that as well. And lastly, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit that notifications bell because I'm dropping two new videos every single week, every Monday and every Thursday. And inshallah, you don't want to miss it. Plus, I'm dropping two live streams every week as well. And inshallah, guys, you don't want to miss that as well. I realized that I never told you who I am if you're new here. Normally, I start the video with, Salaam Alaikum, Josh, you're back with another video. Hope you're doing well. But I was so sketched out, man. Trying not to get busted by the 2.5 security guards at Vanderbilt that I was just trying to get the shots done and get the heck out of Dodge. So my name is Joshua. This channel is all about mindset, marriage, and the Muslim struggle. If you're picking up what I'm putting down, again, subscribe, hit that notifications bell, like the button, like the video. And with that being said, Jazakallah Khairan, Barakal Fim, as always, stop worrying about yesterday, start worrying about tomorrow. Make today great, guys. I'll see you in that next one. If you're feeling like you have low Iman, like you're losing your Iman, and that you just don't have any feeling anymore, I'm here to tell you, man, I've, I've been there, dude. I have felt the same. In fact, there was a time in my life, man, where I had daily serious contemplations of leaving a slam.